I'm Amy Northard, the accountant for Creatives, and today I thought I'd share my candid thoughts about what used to be the best free bookkeeping software. Now, don't get me wrong, they do still have a free option, but they've taken away a lot of the things that really made it usable. So today I want to share a little bit about Wave Bookkeeping. The URL is waveapps.com, and it's something that I have used for various side projects, you know, things that I don't necessarily want to invest in a full bookkeeping software like QuickBooks, and it does the job. So let's take a look at Wave. Here's what it looks like today. Um, it is May 2024, and things do change semi-often in terms of how they're laid out, but this is the way it looks now. Um, the company information I'm about to show you is just some sample information from a long time ago that I have in here for demonstrations. So what you'll do when you start using WAVE is you'll connect your bank accounts. You will want WAVE to automatically pull in your transactions. Now the big bummer of what they've changed to is you have to upgrade to their paid plan in order to take advantage of the auto import. If you don't, then you have to manually add them or manually import the transactions. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, but once you have the transactions in here, they will show up on this transaction page under accounting. And this is gonna be where you give everything a category. Um, if it is an expense or credit card payment, um, things like that, this is where you will give everything a category, and you wanna make sure that you check mark it so that it goes into the software. On this reconciliation page is where you're going to reconcile all of your accounts. So you'll definitely want to do the checking accounts, credit cards, things that can be done will, you know, you can link them in here and they will show up here if they need to be reconciled. Cash on hand is one of the accounts that is like a stock account. It's gonna show up here whether you use it or not. So you don't have to reconcile that unless you have like a shop with a cash drawer and you do keep track of it. So otherwise you'll just wanna take care of your checking accounts. It does a great job of guiding you through, grab your statement, start reconciling. Um, you want to make sure that your statement end date matches with what you input here. So some of them will be like uh, June 15th is the end of the statement. You don't want to just auto automatically assume that it ends the last day of the month. So make sure that matches up and then grab your ending balance from that statement. And this should be something that you do every month. I would put this on your calendar uh, to get it done as soon as all your statements are available and take care of that. Let's see what it's saying here. So I just made up a number when I entered that, but, and I'm making up a number now. It's just saying that the balances are wrong from what they have recorded. They pull in that bank statement information and then they're matching it with what you have. So um, you'll go in here and fix. And this is, Kind of similar to how QuickBooks uh, reconciliation is matched up, essentially you wanna end with a difference of zero. So as you mark a statement off, mark a transaction off in on your bank statement, you'll match it here. And you'll just go through um, and keep clicking those. When you're done, the difference should be zero. So. You want to, like I said, do that every month. Do it for all your checking accounts, savings accounts, credit cards. Uh, if you have loans and you get loan statements, you should be able to do that as well. Um, over here on the chart of accounts, this is where you can create new accounts. You can um, reorganize some things. So in this one, there are four different income accounts. If you want to add a new one, just make sure it says income. You can make up the name. Let's say you want to track product sales. You don't necessarily need an account ID unless you want to, and then you don't really need a description unless you 
you want to add that in. So now you've got product sales. And when you go to give everything a category, this will show up as an income option. And then you've got all your expenses here. You can delete them. You can add new ones in. Um, I would not get super specific as to like uh, mail chip expense and things like that. I would have like a software expense, but you know, there's going to be things that are uh, geared towards your business. Like maybe you're a photographer and you have a lot of props for newborns. So you might have a props expense. Uh, that's not going to be in here as a stock expense, so, but it would be a good thing to see how much money you're spending in that category. So that would be an example of something that I would add here as a category. All right. So banking is where you're going to see all the accounts that you have connected. This is also where you can connect your accounts. Payouts is going to be if you are using Wave to collect or send invoices and collect payment. So we're gonna look for that. And then if you have employees, you can also come get a quote for workers' comp. So they're trying to make it very all-inclusive as to what you need through here. And they also have a payroll option as well. So it's kind of a one-stop shop similar to what QuickBooks is. I have never used their payroll before, so I can't speak to the ease of it, but all of these different things are going to be different additional fees. So it's going to cost extra to add on payroll. Um, it doesn't necessarily cost extra to send invoices through them, but you will pay a credit card fee, um, which is typical. Uh, let's take a look at the reports. So they have, the reason I recommend this to um, everyone that doesn't want to use QuickBooks is because of the reporting options. They have a profit and loss report, which is what we would need to do your tax return, as well as a balance sheet, which is what's going to be required if you're an S corporation or a partnership. So these are, this is great that they have this. If you're using something like FreshBooks, I would check to see if they have these statements. Um, if you're a Schedule C business, you can get away with just income and expenses being shown. But once you make that jump to an S Corp or a partnership, you really need to have this balance sheet report. They also have a few other different reports down here. It's gonna, you're gonna be able to use these, but you, you have to make sure that when you add transactions in, you are filling in all the fields. So filling in the vendors on your expenses and that sort of thing. So we'll take a look at the profit and loss really quickly. One thing to keep an eye on is this report type. Most of our clients are cash basis taxpayers. That means when you receive the dollar, you report it for that year. Accrual is more based on when you're earning things or when an expense is going to actually be used. So if you pay for three years of software with cash basis, you can write off that full three years of software expense the year you paid for it. But with accrual, you need to spread it out over three years. It's more closely matches how things are being received and used in the business. So keep that in mind, check this cash basis field, and then you can adjust your dates. So I don't think there's going to be any data for these. Um, but another thing to point out that's not super obvious is right now it's giving you summary information. You will want to expand this and when you move it over to details, it will show all of your income categories as well as all of your um, expense categories. So we'll just take a look real quick. So you can see how it pops that down, but if we just do summary, it's just going to give you the totals. So that's another thing to be aware of. Um, so that's just kind of a general overview. They have their pricing on their website and you can view the comparison of what's free versus what's paid. It's still a great price for tax or uh, bookkeeping software um, for 
you know, what they offer. So I'm not, I don't mind them charging for it, but it was a nice free option for those little side projects that you needed to just do a little bit of bookkeeping for on an unregular basis. Like my HOA uses it for their bookkeeping. If we start like a little sole proprietorship or, you know, something like that on the side, it's been nice to use it for that and not have to incur the additional fee. Um, one thing to point out is when we have clients that we are using their wave account for bookkeeping or uh, for tax returns, we always have them add us as users to their WAVE account. But you will see here, right here, this feature to add users to your business is no longer going to be available in the free version for anyone that creates a WAVE account after May 1st, 2024. You would have to upgrade to the paid plan to be able to add us. So that means sharing passwords, which is not ideal, or being the one that you have to, you know, if your accountant needs an updated copy of the report, you're going to have to be the gopher to go get that. So that's the biggest bummer for me, honestly, but I do still think it's a fabulous software, especially if you're just getting started with bookkeeping, it's a great thing to get your feet wet, learn a little bit about bookkeeping, and then maybe down the road you will move over to QuickBooks or something like that. Uh, so thank you so much for walking through Wave, getting my thoughts on it. If you have any other topics you'd like me to go over or have anything else within Wave that you'd like to see in detail, please leave me a comment below and I'm happy to make a video on it. Thank you.